Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I am with Baron Burns, who once is to get the out, full uh, uh, CEO looks good. of One X. And we are gonna have a very special treat for you today, so stay tuned. Right guys, special treat, right? Yeah, very special treat. All right, cool. Hey buddy. Hey. Oh, he's so little in person. Oh, he's so cute. So, I can talk to him. Yeah. Oh, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Can we shake hands? Oh, nice. Wow. That's good. Oh, thank you. You are the best robot in the world. You're killing it today, Neo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Scott, eat your heart out. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Hello. 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 I didn't know you could talk. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I have a feeling you're going to be superseded here. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. That's so, fine. <laughs> so, Barrett, um, uh, first of all, thank you for coming back on the channel and especially for making time in this very busy, busy GTC. Did you see the keynote live this morning or not? Or were you oh, I did. I got to That's see awesome. it live. Absolutely magical. Yeah, Jensen it was does such a good job. Uh, right. Two hours, no notes, just I everything know. you care yeah, about. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. No, Jensen no, thank you. Good. No, thank you. <laughs> you don't want to be watered? No, don't, don't, no. I showered today. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so it has a sense of humor, too. Yeah, yeah. Is Neo a he or a he or an it or a she or? You can decide for yourself. We okay. actually sunk a lot of work into making sure it can be both. There we go. And just whatever makes you happy. There you go. So um, I want to ask you, like, one of the things that's immediately apparent with One X is how fluid it is when it's moving. I guess I'll call it a he. I don't know, whatever. But anyway, it, it's very distinctly different than most other robots that look very mechanical. It's much closer to, like, a way a human, like, moves or something. So, like, how do you manage that? Well, it, it is all about the... Uh, the type of robots we build, right? The technology right. in the tendon drive. So the robots we build, they are move more like muscle. So there's right. tendons inside getting pulled by our motors. Right. And basically that is the heart of the machine, right? We figured out how to make motors that are so strong that they can pull tendons very similar to muscle and just move okay. and be dynamical very much like people, right? And that's also why it's quiet and safe which I think right. are like two of the most underestimated things in the market right now. Right. And you, you said gonna... he only weighs 30 kilos, right? Yeah, yeah. So very, very light. Um, what would that be, about uh, 65, 65, 66 pounds? pounds. Yeah, 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 something like that. So, so super light, uh, obviously not that tall. What, about 140 or 50 centimeters? No, 165, actually. 165? Wow, yeah. okay. I'm... You need to reach the top of the shelf, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right, of course. And, and of course, like enclosed in a very uh, soft material, so easy to, you know, if you bump into them, no big deal. It's not going to hurt. No pinch points. Uh, yeah, all of that stuff is fantastic. I'm so, I'm so distracted right now. <laughs> I know, right? But so, you know, it is, for us, it is actually all about how do you get the data to right. get to true machine intelligence. Right. And right. that means you have to live and learn among people. Right. And if you're going to live and learn among people, you have to be safe. It is the yes. most important thing you can do. That's true. That's and, true. you know, if we have robots living mainly in factories, like right. think about it, you get born in a factory cell and right. you live your life there moving this from A to B, you're not going to get very intelligent. Right. But also all of this like beautiful like nuances of like human life, like how you are careful around a pet, you hold the door open yes. for someone, that's all. Like right. if we want our AIs to be aligned with our culture, they actually have to get the data from living and learning among us. So can't wait for a lot of people, hopefully later this year, starting to, I always oh, call it like adopt a Neo, right? Yes. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, because it's going to be a journey. It's journey, exactly. not destination. No. It's not going to work super, it's not going to work perfectly day one. Right. right. But it's going to be a lot of fun and yeah. quite a you journey. You can think of Neo as maybe a puppy. It's like, it's yeah. not perfect yes. when you first get it, but then it like gets better and better. Yeah, so. and your puppy will never do the laundry, right? But Neo uh, will. Hey, yeah. man, that's like, that's the ultimate. Oh, there we go. Peace, peace Neo, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> so, a, a specific question for you, because I yeah. know Dr. Scott Walter wants me to ask, what about the tendon drives? The big problem with them is that the calibration because they can easily stretch, even if you have very, very, I assume you're using something like Kevlar or something. Yes, yeah, so, um, we are using our own proprietary okay. tendons. Um, right. 
there's a lot of problems with tenants. I'd actually yes. say like uh, when you start out, you have like tenants are the most beautiful solution you can think about right. from like a functionality point of view, right? right? If you want to build the best robotic system out there, you have to use tenants. And then there's like a full bucket of problems. Right. It's like yeah. they stretch, <laughs> they wear, they, they, they like number of cycles, like cycle life, right? Complexity, like all of these things. Right. Uh, and that's what we spent the last 10 years figuring out, right? Okay. So okay. at this point, all of these problems are managed very well. And we have a better reliability on our tandem system than most of the other players have on their off-the-shelf harmonic drives or similar systems. But that was a grind, right? That right. was 10 oh, years yes, of yes. like, if we grind long enough on this, it will work. <laughs> because essentially what it is, is a material science problem. Right. And right. think about car tires, right? How much better have they gotten in the last oh, 30, 40 sure. years? Yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. So You don't usually have blowouts anymore, whereas nope. when I was a kid, it was very common to have a tire. But it doesn't happen by itself. Right. It's a lot exactly. of hard work. Yeah, there. exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, the other question is the artificial intelligence aspect of this. What is 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 he running autonomously right now, or is he being teleoperated to some extent? Or uh, so what you're seeing now is a mix, and it depends a bit on what we call intelligence, right? Right. So how the robot moves, how it handles its own balance, how it handles like bending forward, how it handles controlling the forces of like a vacuum cleaner while pushing right. it. All of that is completely autonomous. Okay. How it's walking is completely autonomous. Uh, the high-level goals of like move over here, put right. your hand there, that is currently right now being done by a human. Okay. Um, but our foundation models that we're training based on this data is starting to get pretty good at doing it uh, autonomously. Okay. But it's not good enough yet that it would work like zero shot in a completely new environment like right, this, lots right. of people With and like robots never seen it before. Right, and, yeah. 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 So okay. we're getting there, but I mean, um, that's the journey, right? right? And that's what we want to invite people in on. Because if you want to get to this world where we have an abundance of labor, the only way we get there is we have to have these robots live and learn among us. Right. And a lot of that is going to be teleop. Right. And that's the data you need to learn. And increasingly, we see that we just need a bit of teleop, and then we get the robot to do it autonomously. And then the robot can learn from its own failures, which is very interesting. So I'll give you a good example, right? So you ask Neil to get, go and get a Coke in the fridge. Right. And maybe we can do this with about 50% success rate. If okay. we have some data in our home, and like we've done it in teleop a few times, right. see, it's 50% successful. So you ask it, and it comes back with a can of Coke, and you're like, hey, Neo, thanks. Amazing, right? Right. So now we have data on that was successful, successful, right? So we train on that data. Or maybe it didn't come back, and you're like, right. where did my robot go? <laughs> yeah. And you go looking for it, and I don't know, maybe it's staring out the window in the corner, thinking about life, and you're like, Neo, weren't you supposed to get me a Coke? Right. This is actually a negative example, right? Right. And we put this back into our training data, and we see that we increasingly train on autonomous data, not on teleop data. But you need bootstrap data, right? Yes. And bootstrap data is you start with the internet, because that's just right. there. Mm -hmm. Then you have some simulation. And then you need a bit of teleop. And this enables you to start rolling out these policies so you can learn from experimenting in the real world. So you could consider sort of a, a warm shot. Yeah. Instead of a cold start, you're starting with a warm start, giving it some data. Um, since this is a GTC, and, and obviously, you right here yeah. use Isaac Jim. So, what like what's your relationship with Nvidia? Like, so Nvidia, uh, we have a great working relationship with them. We work very deeply with them, comparing notes. Okay. So, like, we, we train and use our own foundation models, our own RL, and like our own AI. Okay. Um, but we work on a lot of similar problems. So we exchange some data, we exchange some compute, we exchange a lot of notes and work very tightly with their team. Oh, cool. In addition, of course, we're using NVIDIA hardware. Right. So not just for uh, not just for the training, but also for inference, right? So Neo currently runs with an NVIDIA Orin, and we're about to transition over to the Thor. Okay. And um, there's a lot of low-level software work we're doing together with NVIDIA to just ensure that this is very well suited for running humanoids in a home, right? Right. And okay. So, yeah. Okay, one final question for you, which I've been thinking about a lot, which is the first mover advantage into the home. I'm thinking about my iPhone yeah. and my MacBook and all the other app and my Apple Watch. There's once you get one thing in, is this would you consider this potentially a Trojan horse? If you can get into the home first and people like your product that they create an emotional bond with the brand. Is that like 
Had you thought about that? Or yeah, yeah clearly. Clear? But okay. to me, like the most important thing we do isn't that. Okay. Like, what gets me up in the morning, every morning, is I want to solve this problem. Right. I want to get to an abundance of labor, right? Because we're going to be so short on people in society doing labor. Right. Not just in the home, right? I, I look forward to giving people back 2.3 hours every day. Yeah, Usually the nice. 2.3 hours you have with right. your family after you're done with everything else. Right. And not doing chores at home. But of course, the, this is just the start. The reason we're going to the home first is because that is where the data is. That's diverse enough and high quality enough that we can get true machine intelligence where you can basically prompt engineer the real world and get anything done. Right. Getting into industrial, retail, services, hospitals, elderly care, all of that, right? That comes shortly after. Right. So that's really what we're trying to do. So I think, yes, as a consumer brand, first mover advantage is very important. But I think the most important point, point here is the data. Right. The real first mover advantage is once you have this extremely diverse data among people at scale, it's very hard to catch up, right? Because you can just provide autonomous services that no one else can because you have the data. Uh, it's very different from the AI we see today, which is not physical, because right. there all of the data was already available. Right. Here we're talking about actually generating this data by having robots go around and doing things. And I'm super excited to see how this can also affect all models across the board, not just for the robot doing the task, but also just for intelligence in general, when we start to get robots that can actually verify whether their hypotheses are true, right? Right. right. The problem, Jensen talked about this today, right? We have it for math. We have it for coding. We don't have it for everything else. Right. But robots actually close the loop on everything. Like the real world is ground truth. Yeah. Uh, literally. <laughs> if you fall over, you know you blew it. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and models today have very bad spatial understanding. Right. They have very bad physics understanding. And in general, they don't even reason in 3D, right? Right. And this paradigm is going to change when you get a large amount of robotics data. And uh, hopefully this will be able, will enable us to solve some of the unsolved problems in AI, right. which will improve people's lives, not only by what the robot can do, but also by what our models can do in general, right? Right. That's cool. That's amazing. Well, I... Ben, thank you so much for inviting me into your living room here. <laughs> it's really wonderful. It. Thank you. And hopefully I'll get a chance to shake here Neo's hand since Scott demanded that I do that today. So we'll see if I can manage it. I'll let you be the camera operator for a minute. Hey, what's up, guy? Hey. Hi. It's good to talk to you. Thank you. Yeah, it's nice great. To you too. Yep. Have a good day. Thank yeah. you. Same. Give a little piece. There we go. That's perfect. Yeah.